All right, this is the start of a playthrough of Starting Tactics issue 333 came out just recently. Operation Unthinkable, Elba to the Odor. Uh, this is a Western Allied attack on the Soviets, actually starting July 1st, 1945. Uh, so could be called Churchill's Nightmare or Patton's Dream. I kind of attached those two statements to this. Um, so previously, there's a previous video to this where I do spend the time to go through the rules, give a rules overview, look at the components. There's also an unboxing. So there's two other videos um, you can watch before this to cover those things. Uh, and this video, my goal is just to uh, go through the setup. Um, <coughs> there's some unique things to it, so I figured it was worth a video of its own. So starting right out here, looking at the rules. A uh, number of things here. You can go through the rules video where we go through this stuff here. But first, we're under the setup. All right. And let's see. Well, we've set our units right. Allied player has their units. Um, they're going to set up on the board, all of them, except for the two airborne cores. I'll show you the force pool in a second. Soviets have a good number of units that are marked with an R. They don't start on the board in the beginning of the game. They're put in a cup, and uh, later during the game, they're drawn each turn. I think randomly determine the amount. They're randomly drawn. So uh, those are already in their cup here. I'm using the Vassal mod from Decision Games. Um, so the first thing we got to do after that, getting all that set aside, is we have to determine the front lines, and that's a roll one to three uh, in the original. The Allies were starting to withdraw during this period to the agreed-upon lines. Um, and we're basically, for variability, they say well, there's a 50% chance they pull back to the Elba, or there's a 50% chance they're still up at <coughs> the Molda River. And we can look at that here. So here's the front line. It's this dotted yellow. And you see right here, it splits. Um, this is the Molda, this is the Elba, okay? So depending on the role, the Western Allies, in this case probably the, the U.S., uh, can set up along here, or they can set up along here. With the goal being to exit this map edge, I think five units next, within five hexes, obviously uh, setting up here would be better. So for my game, I'm going to go ahead and do the roll here. And the roll is a 1. All right. Well, I'll take that. Yeah, it does say 1 here. So that means the Elba. That means they get this forward deployment here. Uh, and that is good. Closer to the map edge. All right. So we've got that resolved. 1 to 3 Elba. They give the hex sides, but it's marked on the board. The next thing we have to do is we have to define, or the uh, Western Allied player determines where the boundary line will be through the U.S. Army Group and the U.K. Army Group. Uh, U.K. Army Group in the north, obviously, U.S. in the west. And we'll just mark it. And this can be changed each turn, but this is a hard barrier. Um, the U.S. units are allowed to be on the hex line, the U.K. or the U.K. Army Group, which contains multiple nations must stay, can't go on the line, they have to stay to the north of it. Uh, but every turn, it's in the turn phase, the Western Allied player can change that. So I was looking at this board before, and um, you know, you could pick a, something that kind of goes straight across the board, you could pick something that's diagonal this way or diagonal that way. Um, you know, I it's interesting, Berlin. Um, for now, and each turn you can change it, so it's probably not that critical. And I kind of said we'd put the line here. I was just looking through it. It gives them the road. And just to show that it's this diagonal, I'll put it here. And the good news is that can change. Um, so each turn you can adjust, but right now, 
paste on that, it cuts right through the middle of Berlin. So UK will set up on these hexes to the north, and the US will set up in Magburg and down here. Did do a count, there are a bit more units in the UK. Um, so, and then the Russians will set up along here, also on the opposite side. So I'll leave these, and that's the first division um, of the army groups. Now you can change it, change it later to a straight line, or change it to something like this, and move the hex. Okay. So now looking at the setup again here, um, we've got the boundary. There's your zigzag. Uh, and there's that. There's an example. And the Allied player may change the boundary at the start of each game turn. If units are on the wrong side, they have to quickly go the other way, if not adjacent. To a Soviet unit, <coughs> may not move adjacent until they're in their own boundary line, so don't want to do that too much. All right, Soviet player then s sets up all starting units to the east of the front line that we picked. Um, we're not doing this. There's a hidden setup option. Everybody's face down. And there's an optional one that Stalin spies got wind of this attack, and all those units in the reinforcement cup actually are um, placed on the east edge of the map and available. But just look at this, and this is kind of a messy window here, but <coughs> I had to start dividing out all these Soviet units. This, there's a lot of Soviet units, and there is a good number in the reserve cup, too. Uh, so it's the classic quantity versus quality. Here you see, uh, here's the airborne cores. They're going to be off board for now. <coughs> here's the US. Um, and then the UK stuff is over here. This is interesting. Here's the uh, the kingdom. I mean, it could be Canadians too. Anzacs, whatever. These are the poles. These poles are Russia, Soviet poles over here, but these are the Holds fighting with the Western Allies. And then here's the interesting group. These are actually Germans who are helping um, against them. It's a good set of motorized divisions there. The only rule is uh, they can't interact with any of the other units here. They can't do attacks. They're kind of a separate force. And they can't be next to the Poles <laughs> who hate them. So the next thing to do now is to uh, set up all these Soviets here. A lot of infantry. Uh, we see the tank corps is a good number here. They got some mech corps. Uh, these are motorized rifle corps. These are those cool recon units that uh, reduce movement point costs if stacked with units. And these are these powerful artillery units. All we covered that all in the uh, in the rules review. And I think uh, when the Soviets set up, then the Western Allies set up, and then the Soviets roll, and they can reposition a number of units based on the Western Ally setup. So what I'm going to do at this point, instead of watching me drop counters on the board, I'm going to pause the recording and come back after I finish the Soviet setup. All right, done with the Soviet setup. Uh, first time playing this game, so I don't ideally know what's best. <coughs> Initially, I went with uh, every other hex, zone of control second line behind it, which I've tried to maintain, but uh, then I realized uh, Zocks are, I, I'd call them leaky. You can move from one Zock to another, so if there was a space between these units, the attacking units could get on either side, cross the river, and then they wouldn't be halved. So to properly take it <coughs> advantage of the river, I decided to go one per each hex, so <coughs> the initial attacks, at least across the river, will be all units will be halved. Uh, that's problematic down here because it's not along the river anymore. <coughs> but I still went with one every here. Um, this one I'm a little worried about, though. I spread this one out a bit, <coughs> and there is a second line here. Um, so what, uh, what each side can do is do combat first, movement second, or the other way around. 
<coughs> so at least for the Allied initial attack, they're going to do combat first. And then, again, they'll hit zones of controls uh, behind the lines here. <coughs> so they'll kind of be stuck. So, not quite sure. Um, yeah, I had to extend these out because with Leaky Zock they could move here. And instead, these units here could attack this guy, and the other unit could attack the second line in advance. <coughs> this way, there's no way they could pull that off. That's why I extended the second line here. Along the river, it doesn't matter. They're, they have to attack, so I brought these in closer. Um, and then I looked at this area. Could go either way. They could have just defended here and freed up these units. Um, maybe next game I'll do that. <coughs> this time I'm just trying to be right on the front on the river. And then I guess I defended this stronger because <coughs> it's closer to the board edge. Um, so that's that. I position two stacks here. Quick response, but I'm also going to get to see the Western Allied set up and be able to move some units around. <coughs> so I may do that. And I stacked them with these white guards units because then they move at the better rate while stacked. So you see I position a stack here and then these here. Tried to use the motorized rifle divisions <coughs> for the second line. Didn't have enough, so you see here end up screening this um, with a mech and an armor. Um, you know, the Allies could try and come through here and here and try and meet in the middle. Um, but then they still got to drive through all this. Uh, the other scary part, although it's right on the map edge, though it's further, is here. Um, the interesting thing is when they come here and they're starting to hit <coughs> these hex sides that can't be crossed unless you've got the 79th so that can you know then that kind of bottles up their attacks so this may be a dead end but we'll see so anyway positioned these they can probably be repositioned depending on what the allies do western allies and then the artillery units, they add 18, so I kind of, all these units are in range for defensive fire. Couldn't cover the whole front, there aren't enough, so I kind of covered some here, covered some here. Didn't use them here in the pocket area, but picks it up again here and here. Um, did I put two down here? Yeah, actually this one, kind of worried about those U.S. units punching through Patton's third army maybe so that is the end of the Soviet setup and like I said um, here we go they do have what's called uh, I don't know Maristroika uh, let's look at that here and I'm not going to do the allied setup on this tape video uh, let's see what we got here yeah, Allied setup, except for the Airborne Corps. Um, no requirement to have a Zoc in every hex, too. And then the Soviet may shift. If the frontline die roll was made in 3 3, it was a 4 through 6, 3d6. Was a 1 through 3, which is, was, oh, less, 2d6. That's interesting. Well, yeah, the Allies read a position, and then the Soviets could, so. Um, yeah, they're going to roll 2d6, and that'll determine how many units they can reposition based on now what they see with the Allied setup. Here's the explanation for it. So, to finish the setup phase next is the Allied setup. Um, here is the Army Group boundary to start. So it's U.S. here, U.K. and other nations here, including the Germans. Um, and then after that, 2d6, and potentially, and that's, these can be repositioned, potentially, or, or these. We'll see.
So we're getting there. This is, uh, yeah, we rolled initially to get the river line. We got the forward run. The, Allies, the Western Allies haven't pulled back yet. And the Soviets are set up. And now, when, uh, next recording, I'll be doing the uh, Allied setup and the Soviet role for repositioning. And then uh, we'll be able to start the game. So, thanks for watching again. If you like, please press like. Um, please subscribe. And also, uh, comments are appreciated, actually encouraged. Um, if you know the game, rules, problems, strategy, you know, maybe, you know, for this game since it's new, maybe questions about the rules, etc. And I would refer you back to the rules overview video. And if you want to see the physical components, there was an unboxing video. So, see you in the next recording. Thanks for listening.